Good morning and welcome to Christ United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Catherine Salazar, um, a provisional deacon serving here at Christ United Methodist. Uh, Dustin is away for a little while. He's not here today. He won't be here next week as well. We have a, a guest preacher next week, um, but please make sure you come because we have communion. Will you please join me in prayer? God of all the sheep, those who remain close to you and those who stray, those who are always faithful and those who are lost, be with us today. Help us take a look at our lives and our relationship to you. Bring us close, draw us in, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Couple things before we get started. Uh, you have some pew, some cards in front of you in the pew. One of them is a if your information has changed. Um, or if you are uh, wanting to share any information with the church, please fill out what, that card. The second card is um, if you have any prayer requests. So if you have prayer requests, you can fill out the card. You can place it in the offering during our offering time, or you can hold on to it and give it to me at the end of service, and I would be happy to pray with you about your needs. Please join me in today's call to worship. Though the way seems long and the road rough, yet will we trust the one who leads us. Though the direction is unknown and we don't know the outcome, yet will we place our lives in Christ's loving care. It is Christ who brings us out to green pastures and restores our souls. It is Christ who gives us hope. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, inasmuch as God is our shepherd, let us not fear, but confess our sin that God may restore our souls. Let us pray. Holy One, we confess to you and to one another that we have not always followed Christ's example. When we have been abused, we have been abusive in return. We have gone astray. Lead us back into your fold and guard our souls in Jesus' name. Amen. The promise of our faith is that if we entrust ourselves to the one who, who judges justly, we do not need to feel threatened for we will be returned to righteousness. Having been brought back into the safety of God's fold, let us share our peace with one another. Please stand, you're already standing, offer peace to those around you. Let us pray. Consoling and guiding God, we bring our offerings and our very lives to your altar this morning. Many of us come feeling like we are in the midst of a storm with disagreement and discord buffeting us from all directions. Help us to hear your voice in the midst of this, your call to serve and your encouragement to endure for the work of the kingdom. Lead us to the light and hope of this Easter season so we can joyfully and faithfully serve you in the world. In the name of Jesus, our rock and our redeemer, we pray. Amen. We have one prayer request that came in from Wilson. Um, I have my first flight on the CV-22. I am not sure what that means, but I'm sure they can tell you. Um, on the CV-22 soon, and I found out find out my next assignment in the coming week. So congratulations and good luck with flying is hard. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy and loving God. We come before you today with hearts full of gratitude and thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. We come lifting up to you our joys, our concerns, our hopes, and our fears, knowing that you hear every prayer, whether spoken or held tenderly in our hearts. On this fourth Sunday of Easter, May we continue to be inspired to fully live into the awe and wonder of the resurrection and to reflect that back into this world, 
to be Easter people in all that we do. We give thanks for the beauty of your creation, for the changing seasons and the cycles of life. The newness and beauty of spring renews and refreshes us, and we are grateful. Keep us ever mindful that you have instructed us to be good stewards of this gift, caring for it and protecting it for future generations. Help us to live in harmony with the earth and all its creatures and to appreciate the wonder and majesty of your handiwork. We pray for those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. Nancy Stewart, as she waits for her next heart procedure on the 8th, Donna Childers as she recovers from knee replacement, and all those who remain on our hearts. We ask for your healing touch to be upon them and that they may be restored to wholeness and health. May they feel your presence and your love as they are surrounded by your care and compassion. We pray for those who are lonely or grieving, or those who are struggling with depression or anxiety, addiction or abuse, those who are experiencing financial hardship or homelessness. Grant us the courage and the empathy to reach out to those in need, to step out of our comfort zones and to put our faith in action. May those actions always be a reflection of your love and compassion for each one of us. We pray for those who are struggling with difficult decisions, especially those who are discerning their vocations or seeking direction in their lives. Guide them through your wisdom and your Holy Spirit, and may they find peace in knowing that you have a plan for their lives. We pray for our world, for all those who are suffering because of war, poverty, and injustice. We pray that you inspire us to work for peace and justice and to be advocates for those who are marginalized and oppressed. May we always be agents of your love and grace in this world. As we hear your word today, we ask you to open our hearts and minds to receive your message. May your Holy Spirit guide and inspire Kathy as she shares this message. Help us to understand your will for our lives and to be faithful disciples of your son, Jesus Christ. May the scriptures and the words we hear today inspire us to live more fully into your love and to share that love with others. We offer these prayers to you, trusting in your steadfast love and faithfulness. May we be strengthened and renewed by your presence, and may we continue to grow in our faith and our love for you. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. My name is Karen, and today I'm doing the children's sermon. And we're going to talk about God and creation and how the world was made. And it's in the very first book of the Bible, Genesis. And the very first verse of the Bible is in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Can you guys, do you guys know that verse? Let's say it together. You can repeat after me. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, let's say it again. Only it's going to be more words this time. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Excellent. Okay. But he didn't do it all in one day. 
what he did in the beginning, there was nothing. There was just darkness, nothing at all. And the spirit of God was in this darkness. And he said um, he was going to create the earth. So in the very first day, it said, let there be light. And there was light. And he separated the light from the darkness. And the light we call, what do we call light? Day. And what do we call darkness? Night. Very good. And that was the first day. And God saw that it was good. And he said, it is good. So the second day, God created the sky. He's created the sky. The third day, he created the land and the plants. Land and plants. What do you think he created on the fourth day? Well, we already had water at the beginning, but now on the fourth day, we have land and plants. Well, we're not quite there yet. He created the sun to rule the day and moon to rule the night. So that's the fourth day. The fifth day, he created something that goes in the water. And whales and all kinds of sea creatures, sea creatures. Okay. The next day, he created land animals, all the land animals. And what other land animals are there? Turtles. Turtles. He created people on the sixth day, too, because we're land animals. And on the seventh day, what do you think God did? What do you think he did? He rested. He took a nap. He rested on the seventh day because all creation was good. So what are some of the things that God created? What are some of the, the sun? Yeah, the sun. Animals. That's right. So what are some of your favorite animals? Sure. You like dinosaurs? Pandas. I like porcupines. They're my favorite animals. They're spiky. And... Yeah, what's your favorite animal? A seahorse. A seahorse. That's pretty cool. So I brought a book. And I want you to see some of these animals. Come here. Come over here so you can see the book. Cheetah. That's a cheetah. Cheetahs are the fastest animals. Now look at this, look at this book. He's running. What? Look at him run. Oh, the next one? What is that? A lion. A lion. Look at him running. A gorilla. A gorilla. He's eating a plant. A rhino running. A rhinoceros. A zebra. As, look at him go. Look at the little baby zebra. Elephant flapping his ears. He's flapping his ears. Maybe he's trying to get cool. I think he is. Gazelle? A gazelle. Running. He's running. Giraffe. Look at him. Giraffe. Look, he's running. No, he's going. He was going backwards. He's going backwards? He's okay, he's running backwards. They'll walk backwards if you move the book. Oh, they run backwards if you move the book. Oh, I see. Yes. And those are some of the animals that God created. So let's pray and count of three clap. One, two, three. Thank you, God, for your creation and for all the things that you put in this world for us. The sun, the moon, the light, the darkness, the sea animals, and the land animals. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 19 through 25. For it is a credit to you if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, 
you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. For the gift of scripture, we give thanks. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right. Will you please join me in prayer? Almighty God, you stand among us in the shadows of our time. As we move through every sorrow and trial of this life, uphold us with knowledge of the final morning when we will share in the resurrection of your son, redeemed and restored to the fullness of life and forever free to be your people. Amen. There are many instances in the Gospels that speak to the suffering of Jesus Christ. It began with his parents suffering ridicule of Mary's pregnancy. And then as they looked for a place to birth Jesus, only to wind up in a stinky barn. Jesus could easily have been killed by King Herod. And so his family had to flee to Egypt. So as a young child, Jesus had to endure the trauma of exile and being an immigrant in a foreign country. While we don't know the sufferings that Jesus endured between his very early life and his time in ministry, we do know that his adoptive father, Joseph, leaves the story of the, G of the Jesus narrative, presumably due to death. Jesus suffered. We know that when Jesus started his ministry, he went into the desert. He fasted for 40 days and was confronted and tempted by Satan. Towards the final days of Jesus's time in the wilderness, he is tempted with food and water. So he suffered with hunger and thirst, a suffering of the flesh. He was tempted with power. Throw yourself to the ground so the angels will catch you. The temptation was to do just a little bit of evil in order to achieve a greater good, a suffering of the mind. Bow down before Satan and be the ruler of everything. A temptation of pride is a suffering of the spirit, for it is God who decides when, where, and how Jesus will be glorified. In his humanness, Jesus suffered. As we move through Jesus's three years of ministry, we read of him followed by a group of people who constantly have to be taught. And as a teacher, this gets tiring. Jesus find ways to leave crowds, take some moments and pray alone. Throughout his time in ministry, he works toward finding spaces so that he can have his own respite. Oftentimes, struggling to find this respite, he is followed by others and must continue teaching, preaching, healing, and performing miracles. This is yet another example of suffering, even while ministering to others. Jesus waited a while before going to heal Lazarus, and Lazarus died. We are told he was Jesus's friend. Mary and Martha the sisters of Lazarus confronted Jesus. If you were here, he would still be alive. You could have saved him. It's the first and only time in scripture where we read that Jesus cried. And while there are many different theories on why he cried, scripture tells us Jesus was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. He was suffering. 
And of course, there is the suffering of the last 24 hours of Jesus's life. It begins with one of his closest friends betraying him. Jesus knew that Satan had entered Judas and yet still washed his feet and served him bread and wine and then sent him on his way. Jesus suffered. Jesus suffered when he knew that his other friends would abandon him and leave him alone to endure pain and death. Nowhere did he feel this more than in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed alone. He spoke to God, asking that this cup of suffering might pass over him, and in the same breath realized that it was not his will, but God's will that would be done. And his friends, they were asleep. He had to wake them up three different times. Jesus suffered. Jesus was betrayed by a kiss. And from that moment forward, Jesus endured immense physical, mental, and spiritual suffering. He heard false accusations brought against him. Imagine how Jesus felt as he heard these false accusations about who he was in front of a crowd of people who only days earlier were cheering him on. Jesus suffered. Presented before King Herod and then before Pilate, he didn't speak his truth, knowing others were lying. Imagine the disappointment he felt when the crowd yelled, crucify him. Jesus is severely beaten, a crown of thorns forced upon his head, then forced to carry the post that would be his execution device. Jesus suffered. Jesus was nailed to the cross, then hung upon it. While hanging, he was mocked by soldiers and by one of the two sinners next to him who made a statement similar to Satan three years earlier, save yourself. Jesus suffered. Jesus makes a final statement to God. Why have you forsaken me? He felt alone. Jesus suffered for you and then he was dead. The po poem in Isaiah 53 tells of the suffering servant. Who has believed what we have heard and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, stricken down by God, and afflicted. Verse 20 and 20 through 23 of 1 Peter chapter 2 state, but if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. According to Peter, suffering is a part of the Christian's calling. We are not only called to follow Jesus in doing what is right, but we must also be willing to suffer in doing it. Suffering is a part of the calling for Christians because it was first a part of Christ's calling. Jesus' sufferings were not only an example to follow, but they were a substitute of atonement for our sin. As a Christian, we must make the choice each day to continue to follow Jesus. And we will be tempted, as Jesus was tempted, to not follow Jesus, tempted with bodily appetites or appeasing the flesh, rather than in fasting from what is harmful and unneeded. Being tempted by the world and choices we once lived into, rather than following the path that Jesus teaches us. And finally, being filled with pride, rather than humility. When we make the choice to cleanse our spirit with biblical teachings, regular worship of God, 
and prayer, in committing to loving others and doing all things in humility, we are guaranteed to suffer. We will suffer due to our own poor choices, the poor choices of others, or simply due to life experiences. All humans suffer. It is the nature of the fallen world to, in which we live. First Peter chapter two reminds us how Jesus took on his suffering. Verse 23, when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. The humanity of Jesus trusted in the divinity of God the father and creator. Christ did not embrace poverty and the suffering that entails for their own sake, but out of trust in God and love for humanity, love for you. And as a follower of Jesus, we must do as he did, placing our full trust in God and loving all of humanity. In Philippians chapter two, Paul continues to remind us of who Jesus was that we must follow from the message. Think of yourselves the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave. He became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death and the worst kind of death, a crucifixion. The last two verses of today's scripture read, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die for sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed for you were like sheep gone astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Paired with today's reading is Psalm 23. It brings to mind the Lord being our shepherd leading, restoring, and comforting us on our journey of life. It also reminds us that there is hope in the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, a hope that we can share with others in our world. As a part of the provisional process to ordination in the UMC, which by the way, saved uh, June 14th, that's when I will hopefully be ordained, every candidate must undergo a psychological evaluation. My evaluation was a four or five hour visit with a very thorough psychologist. Uh, to be fair, he used to only evaluate men going into the priesthood. So I was his one and only UMC interview. He asked me questions about every single aspect of my life, from my parents' upbringing, to my siblings and their adjustments in their lives, to my living self from before I was conceived to the current year of my life. I met with him in 2012. I was 38 years old. Like many of us here, I have suffered, whether through my own personal or poor decision-making, the poor decision-making of others, or through general life circumstances. My adverse childhood experiences score is a six out of 10, placing me at a high risk for toxic stress. Over my years, I have sought out and attended counseling as needed to help me process through my adverse experiences, not only from my childhood, but also those I've experienced as an adult. When I met with the Board of Ordained Ministry for my first interview, Members of my interview committee had read my very long report. I think it was like 14 pages. One question I was asked during that interview went something like, 
how were you able to survive so much trauma in your life and still work with people experiencing trauma? My reply was simply, I knew God was always with me. No matter the circumstances or situations I suffered through, I speak with God and trust in God's love for me and to all of creation. Without the many sufferings of my life, I would not be who I am today, especially with the many resources available to help me heal. And through these times of suffering, I trust that God will continue to hold me, love me, and provide comfort and healing, both now and in the kingdom to come. I want to close with a familiar poem written by Mary Stevenson in 1936, or at least that's the internet research I did. <laughs> One night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. In each scene, I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints. Other times there was only one. This bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could see only one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, you promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I have noticed that during the most trying times of my life, there has been only one set of footprints in the sand. Why, when I needed you most, have you not been there for me? The Lord rep replied, the years when you have seen only one set of footprints, my child, is when I carried you. As faithful believers, we know that God walks beside us and that we're not alone. Because even though we walk through very dark valleys, God is with us. In those that surround us and give us strength, and with us in those with whom we share our suffering. We have an unshakable foundation of hope that has been given to us from the cross of Jesus' suffering. And we must go into the world and share that hope with others. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire with your healing grace. Amen. Will you please stand and join in the affirmation of faith that's found in your bulletin? or on the screen, it is from the Nicene Creed. I made you stand because some of you fell asleep. <laughs> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. There are quite a few announcements. So uh, Sunday announcements. The men's prayer breakfast is this coming Saturday at Copper Canyon Cafe at the early time of 730. So if you are wanting to go to that, please go. Um, the stuff sale is coming up. Just know that there's a lot of information in the bulletin. I urge you to look through that. The big thing is if you are starting to look through your closets or that shed or storage area that you have, uh, you cannot bring your stuff until after May 22nd. Um, M&M's is meeting Cinco de Mayo, May 5th um, at 1 p.m. here in the Fellowship Hall. Um, so there's bring your snacks or your favorite chips also or other Southwestern snack to share with the group. Water will be provided, but you know, you bring your own stuff and it'll be a fun time for everybody. Um, next week, we will have a guest preacher um, before he comes to speak here in the sanctuary for our service, he will be leading Sunday school in the sanctuary at nine o'clock. So this is um, Martin Reeves. He is a, a longtime missionary and serves right now currently in Peru. So uh, come at nine o'clock hear uh, Martin Reeves and learn about his ministry and then stay for worship. So he's the person who's going to be preaching. Finally, there's a lot of paper. Um, the New Mexico Annual Conference is doing a service project. Uh, annual Conference will be in Las Cruces. I think it's June 13th through the 15th. No, I have the dates wrong. 14, 15, 16 ordinations on the 15th. Uh, and you don't have to go. It'll be like projected somewhere. Um, anyhow, um, we're doing a service project. So if you have packages of new socks and underwear, all different sizes, remember it's male, female, and bras are underwear. So if you find sports bras, is what we found is best uh, at the middle school level. Um, they are collecting these for El, El, uh, El Carvario. Let me see if I say it. El Calvario Mission is receiving all of this um, and they meet, are in need of socks and underwear. So if you would please start collecting um, when you go to the Costco has good deals and so does Sam's Club. All right, so um, if you would do me a favor, pick up your hand, put it to your mouth, give a kiss and blow it. All right, pain and suffering have come into your life, but remember pain, sorrow, suffering are but the kiss of Jesus, a sign that you have come so close to him that he can kiss you. This is from Mother Teresa. Go into the world to love and serve others. Go to bring them hope in their suffering. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.